Hi there. Okay. Let's talk about how feminine shame cuts us off from our bodies and our intuition. All right. So for starters, your intuition lives in your body, right? Like it all is here. So if we're disconnected from this, we're not going to be able to hear and feel our intuition. We're kind of living from here up and the head, the mind, the brain is a wonderful tool. I love my brain. I am so grateful for my mind. And that's not where our intuition lives. That's not where we can really tune in and feel our next steps. So feminine shame cuts us off from our bodies and from our hearts, our intuitions. Our bodies have really been ay, the subjects of so much scrutiny, judgment, <clears throat> and shame, and ridicule, and persecution, and worse. So much more. And so it can be really, really hard to inhabit something that is so charged, that carries a lot of pain and trauma and shame associated with it. It is a radical ongoing act and practice to fully inhabit our vessels on a daily basis. And it's not always easy. Yeah, there are good days and there are bad days. And so feminine shame has done a beautiful job of teaching us that, that answers are outside of ourselves. So we're not to be trusted and our perceptions and experiences are invalid. And this again cuts us off from our ability to trust ourselves and to, to hear ourselves and to trust our own experiences. So those, those programs, like I said, just really ensure that a solid connection is gonna be damn near impossible. And I really want to remind you that your body is not a shameful, sinful, scary thing. It is not here to work against you. Your symptoms are sacred messengers and they're inviting you back into yourself. Your intuition is not some hokey, woo-woo, nonsensical part of yourself, even though Again, they've done a very good job of making it seem like it is the case. It is not. It is real and it is never wrong. And if something doesn't feel right for you, trust that. Listen and act accordingly. Don't, you know, listen, hear it, and then maybe need that like extra external validation. Have you ever done that? Like you hear the answer you know what your next step is and then you maybe go ask somebody else what they think or Google something or you know do the opposite of what you received from from your body and from your intuition and you are your own best teacher your own best healer your own best guide and so when we're running these these programs of feminine shame which again is a reminder is is this intense and deeply held resistance, aversion, resentment, and fear towards anything that is soft, transient, cyclical, fluid, passive, nurturing, and emotional, right? So it's, it's kind of this, this double whammy. Like, yes, I'm, I'm speaking to women in women's bodies when I speak of feminine shame, and I'm also speaking to something much bigger and broader than that, that has nothing to do with gender and nothing to do with physical anatomy. So this legacy of feminine shame lives in all of us because there is this deeply held resistance and aversion and fear of that which is cyclical and transient. So we favor things that are fixed and rigid and more uh, solar in nature. And that's like, nothing in our lives, right? Our bodies are completely cyclical, completely changing. We age, we excrete waste, we are constantly changing. And so it can be really hard to be connected to something that is, again, a feminine form and also fits into this more spirally. In my work, I refer to feminine energy as the spiral to get us out of 
what we think we know that means, right? What we think, what we may think about feminine and invite us into a deeper perspective. And so the body is by nature incredibly transient, incredibly fickle. So you have these, these two things working against you and you get to choose to identify that and confront it and heal it and choose to powerfully inhabit your body and begin to listen to your intuition and begin to trust your body. And you can do that very slowly and lovingly and gently, tuning in several times a day, breathing, noticing how you feel, asking yourself what you need. And so I'm curious what this looks like for you, how you practice being intentionally embodied and intentionally hearing your own innate wisdom and how feminine shame has has prevented you at times from being able to do that. I'd love to hear the challenges and the wins, so please share them with me.